index is 13,975. So that's shouting distance from 14,000. Bulls are fighting back. The Nifty's recovered about 45 points from the day's low. It's been uh, slightly volatile, the day's trade. The market has recovered from the lows of the day, trading with a mild positive bias at the moment. The 15th session in the month of December where the Nifty is hitting a record high, very close to the 14,000 mark. Indian markets fall in early trade in line with global markets, but recover on news of the Oxford vaccine getting UK approval. Sensex and Nifty end at record highs. Realty, cement and metal companies shine. Britain clears a COVID-19 vaccine developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford University. Walkhard and AstraZeneca saw 8 and 2% respectively as the vaccine is to be manufactured in India. Indian authorities go into a huddle and sources say the AstraZeneca vaccine could get approval in India soon. Financials drag markets lower after RBI cautions on the veiled stress in the banking system. It also warns that asset quality of banks may deteriorate sharply. Auto stocks gain ahead of December sales numbers expected on January 1. Brokerages expect double-digit growth in passenger vehicles and tractors. Expectations of a production-linked incentive scheme for autos also helps these stocks. Morgan Stanley's economist Chetan Ahia sees emerging markets growing at a strong 7.4% in 2021, even as he warns of inflation returning. For India, Ahia says, uh, sees a strong 10% growth in FY21-22, but adds that he's not at all convinced inflation will fall much in India. Well, those were the top five headlines from Dalal Street on a day when the street snatched away a big headline from us. We were going to thumb the desk and say, Nifty hits 14,000. We stopped inches away from it, but the big day may be tomorrow. Welcome to Markets Today, the show where we'll tell you everything that happened in those six hours of trading in just five headlines. I'm Lata Venkatesh with me, my colleague, Mangalam Mal. Hi, Mangalam. Hi, Lata. Good evening. You know, you could have thumbed the table, but what we do is you started the say, uh, you know, day saying that we are sh within shouting distance of 14,000, yes. but I think we ended within kissing distance yeah. of 14,000. The high of the day was 13,997. Yeah. Reminds you of college days, right? I <laughs> Using know. that mark. But, uh, uh, you know, to celebrate 13,997, why not? We have a packed show today. In market opinion, we have Gautam Dugar of Motilal Oswal Financial Services. We have Cyrus Poonawala, CMD of Serum Institute as well for the latest on the vaccine front. From the auto space, we have Rajiv Bajaj of Bajaj Auto and Pavan Goenka of Mahindra and Mahindra also on the show. Like we said, Chetan Aya, the Chief Economist and Global Head of Economics at Morgan Stanley. But before all of that, Lata, what did you make of the market today? Well, uh, actually, I, there is always a fear of heights. When right. you come close to the big number like 14,000, markets tend to dither. And early morning, there were enough cues to dither because Asia had started on a mixed note. Wall Street had ended lower. So one could see the signs of profit taking. Uh, and we thought that, OK, we have to wait for another day because we had re reached even 13,910 or thereabouts uh, at lows. So we thought, OK, we have to wait for another day to reach 14,000. And all of a sudden, we got this vaccine news that the UK regulator has OKed the AstraZeneca vaccine. And since it's going to be made in India, the yeah. feeling obviously is that even for Indians, the vaccine is within touching distance. And that perhaps, that perhaps led to a recovery. Maybe the market would have anyway found a reason to recover. Shots covered and we saw the markets rally. But uh, probably one big reason why the market didn't make it to 14,000 or didn't make big gains were the financials. Across the board, you saw them weak and that's because of a warning that came from the banking regulator. But we will speak more about that later. Uh, first, you tell me, uh, uh, Mangalam, in terms of sectors and in terms of specific stock action, what uh, caught your eye? Well, uh, you know, three sectors did really well today. It was the cement sector, it was the metal space, and it was the realty sector. And apart from that, there were a handful of stocks that did well as well. So talk about the cement space. The biggest of them all, of course, Ultratech was among the top gainers on the Nifty, as was Shri Cement. And when Ultratech uh, moves, we have Grasim, which holds stake in that also moving higher. But it wasn't limited only to the large players. India Cements, for instance, was locked in upper circuit of 20%. We had Ramco Cements, Grasim as well, uh, and Ambuja Cement rather, higher by almost 5 odd percent. Metal stocks, well, on an absolute basis, you may think that, okay, they rose just about a percent and a half for Tata Steel and JSW Steel. But the, the line chart tells you, you know, the last hour we saw a big move. 
across the metal space and perhaps that could be aided by a weaker dollar as well the dollar index slipped below 90 so that's usually commodity positive and that's why the other metals uh, companies like sale jspl and mdc also uh, you know moved higher what has continuously moved higher along with the nifty which has made record high practically every day of december Asian Paints, that again made a record high today. And following Asian Paints, Berger Paints as well as Kansai and Aerolac moved hard as well. And if you have houses to paint, of course, the housing stocks will surge. So we had DLF, Oberoi Realty, Suntech Realty, the real estate stocks doing rather well in trade today. And then we had an, uh, a handful of gainers which had reasons. Pal Krishna Industries, Nomura was positive on the stock. EID Perry, because of the stake that they sold uh, in Coromandel, uh, you know, strengthens their balance sheet. And UPL, of course, because they prepaid close to $400 million uh, worth debt. So that was a big positive as well. In terms of losers, there were few and far in between. Like the, the banking space that you spoke about, right? You have Indusind Bank, Axis Bank, as well as SBI. And some few, uh, uh, you know, stray shots of profit booking seen in a couple of these big movers. Uh, pharmaceutical index has been the best one in 2020 so far. So Sun Pharma, Granules India, I mean, no problems as far as these stocks are concerned. And a couple of these consumption names as well, the likes of Tata Consumer and uh, Jubilant Foodworks, which have been big movers through this year maybe saw some profit taking at the end. Oh yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, the big uh, uh, falters or uh, the big draggers were really the financials, financials of every hue. But we'll come to that in a bit. Let's get to expert market opinion. We spoke with Gautam Dugard, the head of research at Motilal Oswal Financial Services. And he says that despite high valuations, earnings will pick up and that will justify the valuations. He adds that 2021 will continue to be a good year for pharma. Here are some of the thoughts we got from him. The corporate earning cycle seems to be changing now, right? Uh, we have seen September quarter 17% earnings growth, first quarter of earnings upgrade after many, many years, and things look pretty good even for December quarter. We are at 500 rupees thereabouts for FY21 Nifty EPS. We had seen a 9% EPS upgrade in the September quarter. And while we are still doing the numbers for December quarter, this 500 rupees uh, uh, threshold for FY21 stays as it is. For FY22, the expectations are quite strong. We are at 675 rupees of EPS for FY22. For five years, pharma earnings have gone nowhere. 2021 is the first, years of earning, first year of earnings growth. And we are expecting, as per our current estimate, this earnings momentum to continue in FY22 as well. We are expecting 17, 18% pharma earnings growth valuations are still not exorbitant out here and they shouldn't be because their ROEs are much lower than the consumer companies. Their free cash flow conversion is also much lower and there is always a volatility on earnings given what the regulator does. Having said that, what we like in the space is DVs. We continue to have Sun and Lupin in our model portfolio and as far as mid caps go, we have IPCA in our model portfolio. Aside of that, we also like uh, something like an Ajanta Pharma, uh, something like a Granules. Okay. Uh, well, that was an extremely enlightening conversation with uh, Gautam Dugard, an otherwise conservative investor, saying that he expects uh, that we are on the cusp of a long earnings growth uh, uh, period. Now to the second headline. The United Kingdom medicine regulator, MHRA, has approved the Oxford University AstraZeneca vaccine for emergency use. Walkart and AstraZeneca stocks were the two stocks that rallied between 2 and 8 percent in India because this vaccine is going to be manufactured here in India by Walkart as well as by Serum Institute. In fact, Serum Institute uh, uh, has already begun what you call at-risk production of this vaccine. Let's straight away go to Ekta Batra, our pharma specialist, who will fill us in on the latest. Ekta, tell us. Well, yes, the UK government has approved AstraZeneca and Oxford's vaccine. So for Serum, they spoke to CNBC TV 18 and they said that they expect regulatory approval in India in the next few days. They are in touch with the government on price negotiations and costing, but there is no firm commitment on vaccine requirements as of now from the Indian government. They said that they will not run into losses uh, due to the scale of manufacturing, but it will not probably be very profitable. Separately, work hard would be in focus because of the they provide fill and finish work for the vaccine uh, to the UK government. So they will fill the vials of the vaccine and package it for the UK government. Separately, a couple of these stocks such as AstraZeneca would be in focus on hopes that maybe they could gain on possibilities of participation in distribution and manufacturing with 
their parent company, AstraZeneca? Well, uh, we have been very uh, much uh, in touch with uh, the Drug Control of India and the other powers that be. And they were assured us that they will uh, maybe by the end of this week or next week for sure uh, license us. The licensing of the vaccine made by Serum Institute of India should be far away, maybe a few days from today. And uh, we've okay. got 70 Mr. million Poonamala. doses now ready and licensed, uh, tested the National Control Laboratory ready for release whenever the drug controller gives us the necessary uh, official approval. My main problem is the health ministry has still not given us a firm uh, order or commitment to buy uh, not even 10 or 20 million doses as of now. So the first question I ask is, when is that order going to be placed? Uh, and what will be the uh, uh, states or uh, cities that they would like us to deliver the vaccine? But I don't think it's out of uh, the reach of the health ministry and the government of India. They haven't given us a firm commitment, so I don't want to go on air and make a commitment which is not in our hands. Well, uh, following the approval for emergency use in the UK, the Select Expert Committee in India is now meeting to deliberate upon uh, the approval for Serum Institute's Covishield vaccine. Timsi Chaipuria joins in with the details. Timsi, Serum has already furnished the details that were sought by the committee. What's expected in today's meeting? Well, uh, as we speak, the Subject Expert Committee is uh, right now considering making their presentation at the same time that they are presenting their case in front of the subject expert committee for their vaccine candidate COVID shield which uh, they are developing with Oxford AstraZeneca and this time they were supposed to put out uh, the efficacy data try and give more details about the efficacy data we also understand that uh, sources uh, had told us earlier also that once MHRA UK MHRA's approval is there within next 48 hours or so is what the Indian government will try and give them the EUA. And for that only, this uh, urgent meeting of SEC has been called. As we speak, the meeting is on. And uh, let's see whether SEC gets convinced with the presentation that uh, Serum Institute uh, makes today. If they do, then uh, they would recommend the Drug Controller General to give the EUA to SII. So let's see if the recommendation comes by end of the day then maybe tomorrow the other legal procedure can be continued by the Drug Controller General to extend the EUA. But it all depends on the recommendation made by SEC because SEC is the recommending authority and not the granting authority okay, for the got EUA. That. Right. All right, Dempsey, thanks a lot for that. So uh, the SEC likely to recommend emergency use approval for Serum Institute's uh, vaccine, Covishield. But with that, we'll move on to the third headline for the day. Financials, they were the ones that dragged the market lower after the RBI cautioned on the whale stress in the banking system, warned that asset quality of banks may actually deteriorate sharply. Lata, should we be, should we be worried? Yes, you know, the RBI is privy to more information than any one person. And uh, for the first time, we got some numbers. Uh, they told us that 40% of all uh, loans given by banks had been put under moratorium or had sought moratorium and that the September 30th GNPA number while it is at seven and a half percent lower than the eight and a half uh, in March of uh, 2020 that seven and a half would have been 0.1 to 0.7 percent higher uh, depending on the bank because uh, they had not recognized as NPA some of the COVID hit loans RBI had given that permission. So we got a number that you know the GNPA would actually have been some 8.2% and not 75 uh, as uh, we learned. The other thing that it's the language that RBI used, you know, at least of the past we know. Look at the language. The uh, 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 asset quality of banks may deteriorate sharply in the days to come mm. because of COVID loans. Now, this is not what the market is really prepared for. But nevertheless, there was one consolation. With their calculations, they said that the CET, the equity of banks, needs to be increased by 1%, actually 150 basis, they said. So with that, you can calculate that, uh, you know, the deterioration that they expect. And that is more or less priced in by most investors. That may explain why you saw the late recovery in banks. All right, Lata, we will watch out for that. Uh
Uh, in fact, we also spoke with Gautam Duggar on uh, the financial spaces uh, as well as the banks and uh, the NBFCs. And this is what he had to say. I, I would bet on the continuation of the theme that we have been highlighting, which is the recovery in BFSI. This is the biggest sector, 38% of Nifty, and the biggest contributor to incremental earnings for FY21 as well as FY22. But uh, nowhere in the last 20, 25 years of earnings have we seen an earnings upcycle starting with BFSI, large banks, PCR at somewhere between 75 to 85%. So I think banking will continue to surprise people in 2021. It has already given very strong returns in the last six months. Okay, uh, that's some advice on the financial sector. And with that, we are going into a break. But don't go anywhere. There were lots of interesting stories that we got from the market today. We are coming back with all that in a jiffy. Welcome back to Markets Today. We have told you three interesting stories from the markets. Here's the fourth. Auto stocks gained ahead of the December sales numbers, which are expected to be announced on Jan 1st. Brokerages say they expect double-digit growth in passenger vehicles and in tractors. But let me not steal the thunder from Sonia Sharoy, who has spoken to a number of brokerages. And here are the details. Numbers are expected to be good. Uh, so the you know the lowdown from brokerages like MK and Nomura is that there will be a positive double digit growth in three pockets uh, passenger vehicles in uh, uh, the uh, tractor makers so in in terms of individual stocks the three stocks that I'm looking at are m and Escorts and Maruti all three are expected to do pretty well in this particular month. Uh, now, the double-digit growth in passenger vehicles will be on the wholesale dispatches front, and that's also because of, a, of the base effect that this uh, space is seeing. Also, channel checks indicate that retails are better year-on-year -year in the tractor segment while under a bit of pressure in passenger vehicles and two-wheelers. So, wholesale dispatches are strong, but retail is slightly weak. Uh, now, if you look at individual numbers, Nomura expects Maruti to clock a domestic volume growth of 16.8% year-on-year at about 146,000 units. They forecasted a 28% volume growth for m and tractors and 12% for utility vehicles. And MK expects escorts to do very well this time as well because of the strong monsoon. So the domestic volume growth is expected to be 21% year-on-year in escorts in the month of December. So Sumera looks like it's going to be strong. The commercial vehicle space though is expected to continue to be under a bit of pressure in this month. Back to you. All right, Sonia, thanks a lot for that. We will keep an eye out on these numbers as they uh, hit the screens on the 1st of January 2021. But Raji Bajaj, uh, the, the MD of Bajaj Auto, says the withdrawals of uh, the MEIS scheme has hurt automakers. Well, Pawan Goenka of uh, m, m hopes that there isn't too much tinkering done to the PM li PLI scheme. What uh, has hurt me more as a company is the sudden, erratic, retrospective, withdrawal of MEIS apparently and the reason I say apparently is because it is still not clear whether the MEIS benefit due to us will uh, from 1st of April this year will be forthcoming or not. I would personally hope that there is not too much tinkering uh, that is done based on all the lobbying that is happening today. The objective of PLI scheme is not for large companies to take this money and increase their profit. The objective of PLI scheme is for the large companies to use this money, make the product more competitive, thereby increase the volume, and therefore create a virtuous cycle that will go across all the tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers. And therefore, uh, MSMEs will benefit. One of the other uh, objective, and in fact, I hope that this gets a lot of focus in detailing out this, uh, this scheme, is to increase the value add in India. All right, with that, we talk about the fifth headline of the day. Morgan Stanley's economist Chetan Ahia sees emerging markets growing at 7.5% in 2021, even as he warns of inflation returning. In fact, in India, Ahia sees a growth of 10% in FY21-22, but he adds that he's not at all convinced that inflation will fall much in India. Listen in. There is a lot of uncertainty on India's inflation outlook when I'm thinking about it. Uh, at this point of time, our base case is that these supply side concerns that have caused the inflation to go up will recede, and you should see a decline in inflation in India towards that around uh, four and a half five percent. 
However, uh, I am quite concerned that inflation having remained already above 6% for such a long time, it's still 5.7 for us for FI21 and FI2022, uh, we're expecting 10% uh, GDP growth. So uh, while we are optimistic about FI21, we are not saying that that base effect will actually result into lower growth in 2022. This is not an endogenous shock. This is an exogenous shock. And B, that the policy response has been so aggressive. Uh, we think there will be a V-shaped recovery everywhere, not just uh, the US, but also in India. I think the risks are quite meaningful, and so therefore we are highlighting that. It is uh, very similar to a uh, 2003-04 cycle. Uh, the big difference, though, is the fact that the speed of the recovery is quite strong. So it is in that context is where I was concerned about that losing control on inflation momentum. Uh, you know, the, the, the duration for which the recovery will last will probably not be as uh, as long as what we had during 2003 to seven. India is running deep negative real interest rates and, and they need to kind of uh, take short-term policy rates closer to repo rates first and reduce that uh, magnitude of negative real interest rates that they have and bring down that inflation towards uh, to, you know, at least below 5%. All right, so with those wise words, uh, we've told you the story of the entire trading day in five headlines. With that, we wrap up on this edition of Markets Today, the penultimate Markets Today for 2020. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good and a safe evening.